think of the fact that the UK government has boycotted our show now for 161 days in the middle of the biggest crisis we've faced in my lifetime? I think it's disgusting and it's a, you know, it's a failure in their duty, really. They're public servants. They should be out there speaking to the public. It's not easy. I mean, I've had my, my, my dues with you over the years as a new MP when I was thrown onto the front bench. But at the end of the day, my job is to be there and to support people and to make sure that we're doing the right thing and we're speaking to the public and informing them of what needs to happen. I yeah. think that's absolutely well critical. It, it appears there was no modelling for the 10 p.m. curfew. So if you're asking for the evidence, why wouldn't you ask for the evidence before you back the curfew? Well, what we've said is we'll back whatever measures the government feel is necessary to keep British people safe, and that's the right thing to say. But we are challenging the government as well. I mean, I've said so many times, and, and we're all bored of saying it in the Labour Party, is a test, track and trace system is one of the crucial things we need to keep people safe and track the virus and keep the uh, infection rates down. We've not been able to get on top of that. I mean, it's been months. It's a fiasco. Well, the gonna, World Health Organisation telling us right We're going to come to, that shambles. Right come to that shambles on testing in a moment. Just on that point, though, I'm not sure I agree that that is the role of an opposition in a situation like this, to automatically support the government on any measures this government feels necessary, given how calamitous the government's governance has been of this pandemic. And on that 10pm thing, it is causing... I know this from people I've talked to in the pub and restaurant business. It is causing enormous economic hardship and it makes zero sense from a public health perspective. And so... For Susanna's point, again, why would the Labour Party just blindly say everything the government's doing we support? Why wouldn't you stand up and go, well, hang on, what do you, what do you mean 10pm curfew? Why are you doing this? And when you don't get satisfactory answers, try and stop them doing it. Yeah, I mean, Piers, we're not saying that we just give them carte blanche support for everything. What we've said is that we don't want to confuse the public health messages. We've challenged the government on things like where the evidence is for the 10pm curfew, because you're absolutely right, people need to know that. But what we haven't tried to do is be an alternative and try and confuse the messaging, because, quite frankly, the government are doing enough of that themselves. People should follow the rules and follow the law. That's what we're quite clear on. I mean, even the government are not being able to do that themselves with their advisers, and that's pretty annoying for most people, especially like people in GM who have been trying to do the right thing for the last couple of months. I've not seen my granddaughter for months, I can't. And yet you've got people um, that, you know, you've got other parts of the country, like the Chancellor's constituency, that have infection rates that were just as high as Blackburn was, but they're not in local restrictions. So people in the north are rightly pretty cheesed off by the way in which the government have implemented having, these rules. And they're confused that, by it. Even Boris Johnson didn't yeah. know his own rules. Oh, well, that doesn't... He doesn't know what day it is. The, the, um, <laughs> on the point of the, the north... Very interestingly... Well, quiet. Him, him and Donald Trump are competing. Yeah, I know. Well, we'll come to Mr <laughs> Trump in a moment. He's the biggest idiot. We'll come to the president in a moment. Um, which one's a blithering idiot? No, who's the biggest idiot, Angela oh, Rayner? Well, who who would you say well, Who do you think is the biggest idiot? I mean, it's... it's... It's, it's tough competition, if I'm honest. It's really tough competition. I mean, we've got the highest death rates in Europe and Donald Trump is killing, you know, thousands of Americans by giving them duff advice and his macho, I'm all right, you know, look at me, I've survived COVID. He's an absolute buffoon. He has no place in the White House. He's an embarrassment and he should be ashamed of himself, especially when thousands of Americans have died. COVID is a serious disease. It's a serious pandemic. People have died, loved ones have died and he's an absolute disgrace. And so is Boris Johnson for not being able to even know his own rules. I think they're both idiots and we deserve better than them. So an equal prize. Uh, I don't think many people disagree with you. Mm. The, the question of this testing fiasco, we were promised a world-class testing system. The one thing is world-class at is going wrong. And we now know that there's a race to find 50,000 people who should have been self-isolating. But due to... Well, I can barely believe I'm saying this. An a spreadsheet, spreadsheet Excel blunder led to 16,000 cases or so uh, being uh, sort of unreported, and therefore all the people who were involved in those cases, none of their contacts were contacted to self-isolate. To add sort of mayhem to this fiasco, contact tracers' phone lines, according to The Times, crashed as they scrambled to reach all the people who should have been contacted days ago. It's quite likely by the time they do sort this tech nonsense out, it's way too late 
isn't it? Because these, the virus, if they've got it, it's off and running. Yeah, I mean, to put it into context, we've paid 12 billion for an Excel spreadsheet and people were knocked off. And of the 15,000 that were left for days without being contact traced, uh, put on that spreadsheet, uh, half of them were in the northwest which is the area that we've seen the biggest spikes. So no wonder Manchester's seen rates of over 500 per 100,000. It's absolutely petrifying for the people of Greater Manchester. And yet those people who needed to be contact traced have been left for days without knowing. And the system was already creaking. Even the Tory backbenchers are saying it. The shadow, uh, the previous health secretary, Jeremy Hunt, was attacking the government on it and pleading with them to look at the resources we have in universities to help labs to get more capacity. The government knows what it should have been doing. It's been asleep at the wheel and incompetent. Should Matt Hancock resign? We're having a debate about Boris Johnson later, but he is the health secretary. He has presided over a failure on PPE. He was the one who was overseeing sending 25,000 old people back into care homes. Something which is now them. being investigated by Amnesty International. He was the one that said, you know, carry on uh, shaking hands. He was doing that in early March, he mm -hmm. told everybody. Uh, he's the one that uh, allowed the quarantine system. I mean, he's the health secretary. He signs off on all this stuff. At what point, given the number of fiascos he's presided over, should he consider his position? Well, they don't now, do they? This government are completely impunity. They break the law. The advisers get, you know, the, the civil servants get sacked, but the politicians are quite all right these days. I mean, it's completely unbelievable. They've made us a laughing stock across the world. This used to be one of the democracies that everyone was proud of. So should you resign? The laws that we stuck to. And yet now it's, it's a joke. Well, yeah, it's a, it's a disgrace. The whole government are. The whole but government I agree with you, but should he resign then? I mean, they everything... They people of Britain. Why should somebody who's been such a disgrace continue I'd have got, I'd have got rid of him. I'd have got rid of him tomorrow, Piers. Yeah, so he should resign. I, I, I believe that the whole lot of them, the whole of their front bench is an absolute disaster for this country. The Angela, whole of but the, the, the trouble is, the, trouble is the, 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 the boss in charge has been the biggest disaster, so he's not going to sack him. Okay, but... We know that, but, but just, just to clarify, you, you do think Matt Hancock should resign? Yeah, absolutely. I think he should hang his head in shame, but I don't think he's the only problem. I think the whole of the front bench are a problem okay. and they've not been truthful with the British people and they owe him a massive big apology for the thousands of excess deaths, for the seeding the virus in our care homes. And by the way, they're still taking people out, discharging people from hospital with not knowing whether they're COVID positive or not. So still to this day, they don't care about our elderly relatives that are in care homes. They're a disgrace. OK, but Angela Rayner, you still back all of the measures that the government have taken. I mean, what would the Labour Party... Isn't it time for the Labour Party as the opposition to be a little bit bolder in its opposition? What would you have done differently? And what should you be do doing differently right now to deal with an unprecedented pandemic? To be fair, we have been pushing the government and Keir has been pushing the government, Keir Starmer as well. And he's, you know, he's even asked them to read their own reports because the evidence is there for them. So we've said a test, track and trace system with local knowledge. So help, get, let local authorities help. You know, get the local input into these things. And where we have got local input, the tracing system is 97% accurate compared to the private sector nationally. So actually do what works. You know, 12 billion on an Excel spreadsheet is not good money. 2 billion helping businesses that don't need it when actually other businesses who can't open and, and function as normal are not getting the support that they need. So it's a complete incompetence from the government. It's about how you resource and support people through this difficult time. And having clarity of message they can't even be clear on their own communication strategy it's an absolute shambles mm. so being clear about that having a test track and trace system and having an economic package that helps our businesses and people get through this crisis but that's given, what we do look i listen i agree with most of what you're saying uh, but what i don't agree with is the labor party's position that you can't actually oppose them on some of this stuff because they're making bad decision after bad decision and the consequences for public health and the economy are enormous is it not time you know, given the passion that you feel about the woeful incompetence and negligence of this government, that the Labour Party went, OK, look, you know, we can't have any more of this. Uh, given the mixed messaging coming out of number 10, the mixed messaging argument now has gone out the window, we are now going to oppose any policy this government comes up with that we fundamentally don't agree with, that we think may cost lives or may devastate the economy unnecessarily. Is it not that moment? Have we not reached that moment yet? 
Well, we'll continue to challenge the government peers, and you know, I did. I mean, oppose them. I mean, as you say, we're not again, having I it. I challenged Boris Johnson on his, and and I and I and, and I challenged him on on his corruption, as I saw it, in terms of grouse shooting as a priority because his mate paid for his luxury Caribbean holiday and has two grouse farms. So you know, I had grouse estate. So there is issues that we have highlighted. Okay, so the billions instance, of pounds that are wasted. Instance, our shadow chancellor has in, instance, done that. We've said uh, okay. that the furlough scheme should continue and should be targeted. OK, Angela Rayner, the, the, our Conservative backbenchers who are hoping to vote down the 10pm curfew tomorrow and are due to meet uh, Labour members to join forces, uh, would Labour members join that vote? Well, I don't know what the whip is for tomorrow, and that's an issue for the whips, but what we are doing, and what we've been very clear on, is we'll challenge the government and ask them to see the evidence of why they've decided that's the course of action. We've said we'll support the government to make sure that the communications is clear when, it, when these uh, measures are necessary to keep British people safe. And that's the right thing to do. So I don't think really really the government... You don't see the evidence right 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 tomorrow. Tomorrow. For the sake of it. Here's the problem. They haven't produced the evidence. If they don't produce the evidence... Sorry, Would I can't you... hear you both. Well, they haven't produced the evidence on the 10pm uh, thing. If they don't produce the evidence, why wouldn't you vote against it? If you don't agree with it. Well, like I say, we'll see what, we'll see what the whip is tomorrow. That's, a, that's an issue for our whips and how to deal with it. But I'm very clear. I, we have challenged the government and we continue to challenge the government. I'll give you some clear examples of how we've challenged the government. No, I'm not and disputing it, but no, right one disputes it. No, one disputes, no one disputes you've been challenging them. The, the, the issue is, is it time for the opposition to actually start opposing government policies which appear to be being made up on the hoof and some of them make no sense whatsoever? I don't get the Labour Party's overview position of just eventually going along with everything the government does. Why, why believe them? You think they're so incompetent and so negligent wow. and so awful and the whole front bench is terrible. Why would you support them? Piers, believe it or not, I've been in Parliament in the last couple of weeks voting against the government many times, but, you know, the government have a massive majority, unfortunately, because we lost the last general election and lost it massively. And they have an absolute responsibility now to do the right thing by the British public. We have an absolute responsibility to be constructive opposition, but challenge the government where we think they're getting it wrong. And that's what the general public want us to do. And that's what we've been trying to do. Not just playing politics, because that would be disgraceful, but actually trying to genuinely input to help the government do the right thing. And that's what's really frustrating for me. You know, I've been in Parliament five years. I've spent five years in the opposition benches. It's gut-wrenching. I, I, I traipse through those lobbies. I vote against the government. And guess what? They go through anyway. And that's, that's what's really shameful at the moment is that Boris Johnson and his band of people on the front bench think that they're impunity. They think they've got it all right. And you know what? They'll probably get rid okay. of Boris Johnson in a well, year one of the, or so one of the and reasons, revamp themselves One of the reasons new. why they got that majority is because Labour made such a fiasco of its own leadership and its own election campaigning. That's why. I mean, elections matter. Well, this is why they matter so well, much. Well, yeah. I mean, we didn't... We didn't we di Do you know what? We didn't... Piers, we didn't give the general public what they wanted. We didn't have an offer that the public wanted. And, you know, I accept full responsibility for that. But Boris Johnson said he had an oven-ready Brexit deal, you know. We haven't seen that oven-ready. In fact, the kids have gone starving waiting for that meal. I don't think he's ever cooked anything in the oven in his life if it's an oven-ready deal. And the fiasco and how they've dealt with this pandemic, the North have not had the support that they needed. They've not had the economic support to do the right thing. Our businesses are feeling the pinch now. They'll all probably absolutely regret him voting for Boris Johnson because he's the biggest biggest idiot Prime Minister we've ever had. And I know that the backbenchers on the Tories are feeling exactly the same way okay. as the Labour backbenchers felt uh, two years ago.